up everybody coming at you from my backyard today I want to put a new spin on an old topic people want to talk about rifle setups all the time and if you read the title you know we're here to talk about something that's a little out of the ordinary um, right here I have my first three gun rifle my first real three gun rifle uh, it was built for me by a friend it's very representative of uh, what a lot of folks who came up in the Noveski shooting team era of three gun like I did uh, started out with. You had the the 18 inch rifle length gas system with a heavy stock, big magwell on it. At the time uh, when this was a TAC optics rifle it weighed probably upwards of 10 and a half, 11 pounds. Um, and uh, there's a lot of conventional wisdom at the time that keeps getting rehashed and rehashed in conversations as they pop up every week and uh, there's a lot of people I think who, who re regurgitate this old information and haven't really revisited at the time and I feel like the landscape of the rifle world has changed so um, I'm not really here to give you or to, to convince you of anything I just want to maybe reset the conversation to the present day and the game as it exists today. Okay, so if we were to rewind back to about 2010 or so, uh, the 18 inch rifles ruled the day. And this was for primarily for two reasons. One, it was the, the most efficient way to get the optimal performance out of a 223 cartridge. And that's still true today. Um, and the other thing that was very um, pop that made it very popular at the time was the rifle length gas system to get the softest recoil impulse possible. And um, you'll hear a lot of that information regurgitated today, um, but I think a few things have changed since then that have maybe um, turned the tables on the 18 inch gun uh, that, are, that are worthy of reconsideration. Reconsi and primarily what we're talking about is the, uh, the, the advent or at least the, the vetting of adjustable gas blocks. As adjustable gas blocks became more popular, more people refined their designs and they became more reliable, um, we didn't need a rifle length gas system to get the softest recoil impulse anymore. They're still very soft to be sure, but um, you know what, what sold it at the time was that it was the softest shooting rifle you could get. And, um, and uh, as time went on, uh, I just I kind of fell out of love with these rifles. I started shooting some of the shorter rifles and uh, and realized that this thing was pretty heavy. It was pretty heavy. When it was a TAC Optics rifle, it weighed probably 10 and a half, 11 pounds. Um, and uh, I found myself fighting with the rifle quite a bit as the sport uh, evolved more into this arena style game that it's become today. So uh, this was my serious rifle, but then there were a couple matches where I just, I just got tired of this, I wanted to put it down for a little while, I picked up some of my shorter guns. And when eventually I got tired of fighting with my 18 inch rifle, and I found my way to the 14 fives. 14 and a half inch rifles, um, I found were, were a lot more nimble than, than the 18 inch rifles that, that were in vogue at the time. And um, I started to uh, really be a fan of them. The, the rifle itself was a lot more nimble. Um, it was a lot lighter, um, not so much lighter, but it balanced better for me. And um, as I really started to do research with it, I found that I wasn't giving up anything in a 14 inch rifle that I was getting from an 18 inch rifle. I could get the same uh, ballistic performance on target. I was still making hits um, with, with ease uh, out of a 14 inch rifle. The, the ballistics still matched up with, with my, my BDC reticles and, and uh, all the ballistic tables and everything. Uh, for for the, the type of hits we needed on, on three gun style targets, I found I got exactly the same performance out of a 14 inch rifle that I got out of an 18 inch rifle. And I had a rifle that was a lot easier to shoot for a majority of the game. Because if we realistically look at what the three gun game itself is today, long range targets are maybe 10% of, of the shooting you'll do at a match, maybe. Um, whereas the rest of the match, you still have to wrestle you know, with, an, with an SPR style rifle. Whereas um, with the 14 inch rifle, I, uh, I didn't have any of that. I was still getting ballistic performance and I had something that was, that was more nimble to shoot. 
as we interacted with, with uh, props, with cars, barricades, shooting under walls, uh, compromised shooting positions, I found that I was fighting the rifle a lot less with a 14 and a half inch gun. Um, the caveat with 14 and a half inch gun, you do have to pin and weld uh, the muzzle brake on there, which isn't a big deal, really. It's, it's some of the most simple gunsmithing your, your, uh, your gunsmith's ever gonna have to do. It takes them about 10 minutes. Um, and if you want to change it, it's just a matter of drilling it out and re repinning it. They say you have to pin and weld it. They don't say you have to pin and weld it well. Um, so in, in the broad scheme of things, pinning and welding isn't a real big deal. You will notice that I skipped right over 16 inches. The, the simple answer for that is 16 inch doesn't give me anything I need. The only reason that 16 inch barrels exist is because of the National Firearms Act. Um, that's the only way you can have, or that's the shortest rifle you can have without welding something onto the end of your rifle. But um, with pin and welding, the, the compensators that we use in 3-gun onto the end of the rifle, we can trim another 2 to 3 inches off a rifle and, and get a package that we need. And there's a lot of really popular ones out there today. If I had to be one and done with a rifle and I could only have one, it would be a 14 and a half inch rifle. But with what I learned going to 14 inch rifles, I, I began to ask the question, if I've come this far, why don't I keep going? Why don't we look closer at short barrel rifles? And uh, I couldn't find any good information on it. I know there's some people who have, who have done the research on it that aren't sharing. And I found a lot of people who, who um, would say things like, well, I have this PDW or this truck gun that I built and I shoot it for fun once in a while, but it doesn't perform really good. But if you look at some of the rifles that they were shooting, they weren't, they weren't three gun rifles. They were, you know, you know, uh, goony short barrel rifles that, that people bought because they were fun or, or for other purposes. And you know, no wonder they didn't perform like, like a three gun rifle did. So my question then became, if I'm unleashing the same amount of energy every time I dent the primer, I'm going to get an amount of pressure generated. If I don't need that pressure to build velocity for a long range hit or to fight the wind or, or what have you, if I don't need that pressure to generate velocity, can I instead harness that, that energy to drive a compensator harder? Can I build a three gun rifle that gives me gives me more recoil control in a shorter package and what does that what does that cost and so I started playing with short barreled rifles and what I found was actually quite interesting I found that um, I got a, a much handier package that was um, a lot easier to get in and out of positions. And I didn't give up a whole lot if I was gonna be inside of 400 yards. The big caveat on the short barrel rifles is you are giving up some velocity, to be sure. Um, once you get past about 200, 250 yards, the, the dope on the bullet changes quite a bit. And, uh, well, not quite a bit, but uh, you, you need to you need to start paying attention to the the, uh, the ballistics more carefully to get get hits. But if you realistically look at the ranges that we're shooting inside a three gun, that pretty much encompasses most of the targets at most of the matches across the country. So so um, I started to to see if I could if I could drive more energy into a compensator and a gas system to get a rifle that potentially recoiled less and, um, and uh, was in a handier package. And I think I found that. It's, it's harder to do in a, in a shorter rifle because the, the pressure curves are more extreme in a shorter barrel rifle. So finding an equilibrium of, of the right blend of, of um, gas to cycle the action reliably without overgassing the system is tricky to do. Um, but once you have that, um, in, in some of the ones that I've dialed in, like, like this PWS, um, it's like shooting a staple gun. It really is. 
um, it's it's definitely become one of my preferred setups they're more than capable at free gun distances if you look at what these rifles were originally built for by the manufacturers they were going after the uh, the CQB rifles in the in the SOP mod program for the military uh, to offer short barreled carbines for assaulters, for, for uh, people who clear rooms for a living. And they, they needed a rifle that was very handy and, and, uh, and maneuverable in tight spaces, but still capable out to 300, 400 yards. Well, what do we do in three gun? We're kind of working around a lot of close quarters, props, cars, things of that nature, doing positional work. And most of our targets are within three to 400 yards. So really, if we look at, you know, it, it does a three gun rifle requirements closer resemble Mark 18 CQB assaulters type rifle, or is it more similar to an, a, um, a, a DMR rifle, a designated, designated marksman rifle? I would say that vast majority of three gun is more towards this side of the house. And so, um, I would say that um, maybe folks should start looking a little bit closer at these rifles that were more specifically designed for that purpose. That's not to say that these rifles are incapable at long ranges. Yeah. They certainly are. Uh, all the rifles that I've tested uh, with you know, 11, 10 inch barrels, they're still minute or sub minute guns uh, out to 400 yards. It can get four inch groups pretty readily um, with this PWS and, and, and other rifles that I've tried. So, so the rifles themselves are capable. What becomes challenging with them is that the dope starts to change. Once you get out to 250, your, your drops are going to change and that's something you have to be aware of and account for uh, if you're gonna shoot at those distances. But that's just math you have to do. That's just notes you have to take and, uh, and holds you have to learn. No different than, than any other rifle. Um, you have to know the holds on these too. They're just different with this one. So I don't really consider that to be a, a big hindrance. If I were going to a match where I knew there was going to be a lot of long range, yes, I would, I would tend more, more towards my 14 inch rifle again. But I'm not afraid to shoot long range with this rifle. And what I gained out of, out of cutting the barrel down was I gained something that was a lot better balanced and a lot handier in the more arena style courses. The weight of it is less because we cut some weight off the, off the front end. And then in, in doing so, we also brought the center of gravity back closer to us. So, so we have, have more of the weight in our, in our support hand or our, our, uh, what, our fire control hand we have less to work with out here and I think we have the angles of it are, are a bit better to have more more control over this weight as we hold it up so as you have to stand and deliver for 90 to 100 seconds sometimes in some of the longer field course stages um, you're, you're not as fatigued holding up this rifle to to get a, a pinpoint shot now the flip side of that argument would be, well, just, just get in better shape so you can hold up this rifle. Well, get in better shape, so, you know, strength is strength. If you can hold up that rifle, you can hold up this rifle easier. They weigh what they weigh. So, so I, don't, I don't sort of accept the, the weakling argument against some of these rifles. The other argument that's, that's very interesting is, well, we shoot really long shotguns. And that's true. Um, but why do we shoot long shotguns? We shoot long shotguns because they give us a capacity advantage. And what's the trade-off for the capacity advantage? The capacity comes at, at the cost of length. But when you add length to a shotgun, you're adding, you're adding uh, a very thin tube of aluminum or carbon fiber. When you add length to a rifle, we're adding steel. We're adding very thick, dense steel. Um, and that changes the characteristics of the rifle quite a bit. So, so I think the argument could be made that, yeah, we shoot long shotguns, but you can shoot shorter rifles because we're shaving the weight and getting something that's better balanced. The flip side to the shorter rifles is that you get less 
intrinsic balance um, from, from just the mechanics of pointing the gun. Uh, the longer it is, the more naturally you can just point shoot the gun, which is, which is something that's, that's quite prevalent with these. And that's what a lot of folks will say is that they can naturally point the gun and hit targets without even really looking at the sights. And that is true, but again, you have to, you have to weigh the benefits with the costs. And um, I think that's, that's part of what you need to consider when you look at some of these rifles. Bye. Another thing that comes up when we start talking about short barrel rifles, obviously there's some legal paperwork that goes with them. You have to file Form 4 or Form 1 with the ATF. You gotta have your stamps with you. Uh, there's a tax associated with owning these items. And there's, there's uh, state and local restrictions with traveling with them. And uh, you know, I think that's just a cost you have to pay. You have to decide if it's worth it for you. A lot of us have spent a lot more than $200 to get a competitive advantage before. So uh, I don't see it as necessarily cost prohibitive in the grand scheme of what I watch people spend on rifles all the time, but it is something to consider. The other thing to know before you go the SBR route on three gun rifles is that they are regulated when you're traveling outside of your home state. To leave your home state with your registered short barreled rifle, you need to submit form 20 to the ATF and basically get their permission uh, to move about the country. Those are good for a year, so it's it's something that, that you fill out and you send in. It takes them a few weeks to process. It's not terrible, but um, it, it does have, you know, if, if that's something you want to do, it, it is something, uh, it is a process that you need to follow. Now, do I dislike having to, to fill out the form and get the permission to do this? Yeah, I do. Do I look forward to the day that it changes? Yes, I do. But if I think it's a competitive advantage, Frankly, it's harder to book a hotel room than it is to file Form 20. So, so if I'm going to a match that I think a short barrel rifle is going to be an advantage, I'm going to take the five minutes, I'm going to fill out the form, and, uh, and get it approved ahead of time so that I can, can bring a short barrel rifle to a match. So that's some of the things uh, I wanted to talk about when we, when we realistically have a conversation about what a three-gun rifle does. Do you really need an 18-inch barrel? I would say that the day of the 18-inch barrel is dead if you're being honest with yourself. Unless you live in a, a geographically vast place like Texas or Nevada, or you know, if you shoot a Tar Heel a lot, um, if long range is a big part of your, your three gun experience, then there, it makes some sense to have an 18 inch rifle. But I don't think that the, uh, the conventional wisdom of the base three gun rifle needs to be an 18 inch rifle. I don't think that plays anymore. I think. I think uh, the technology has changed and the game has changed to where the shorter rifles start to make a lot of sense. If I had to have one rifle, or if you can only have one rifle to do everything you want to do in 3-gun, I think the hands down choice is now a 14 or, or 13 inch rifle, whichever legal length you want, but the, the, uh, the 14 inch rifle I think really should be considered the new standard. Uh, it's, it's the shortest rifle you can get without the paperwork and it does everything an 18 inch rifle does. It does pretty much everything a short barrel rifle does. Now, if you can have more than one, if you can have a variety of tools in your toolbox, I really think you need to give short barreled rifles a look. They take a little bit more homework to get dialed in. They're a little bit more finicky, but when you do, I think there are definitely some performance advantages to them that, that make them a viable option for three gun. So there you have it guys, uh, some brief thoughts on barrel lengths for three gun rifles. It's definitely a, uh, a broad topic that has been discussed uh, at length many, many times on a weekly basis. But I wanted to, again, reset the conversation because I feel like we're still rehashing the same thread from ARFCOM from 2011. Um, let's bring the conversation into, into 2017 and look at realistically what the technology has evolved to, what the rifles are capable of, and what we need the rifles to do for us uh, to, pick, to pick the optimal package uh, to give us the performance that we need. So that's, that's just my opinion. If I can only have one, I'll have a 14. If I can have two, I'm gonna have a 14 and an 11. Uh, there isn't really a whole lot of reason to go shorter than 10 or 11, because then really you're just shooting a PCC with a big fireball. But, um, but the, uh, the short rifles are definitely worth a look, especially if you rarely see a target beyond 300 yards. But that's just my mileage. Uh, your, yours may vary. 
Uh, so I definitely invite you to, uh, to comment below uh, what you think uh, about the different barrel lengths of, of three gun rifles. Come find us on uh, Instagram, Facebook, Hawkeye Ordnance and Hawkeye Ignite on Facebook. HawkeyeIgnite.com is where you can find all the, all the events we're doing up here in Minnesota. You can find me on Instagram, PewPewAMAX. Um, and uh, my, co my cohort, Mark, is uh, at Hawkeye Syndicate. Let us know what you think. Let's get this conversation restarted again and, and realistically look at what we need out of three gun rifles today. I'm Adam Maxwell, and that's all I have to say. What's up, everybody? Coming at you live from my backyard today. If you see ISIS sneaking up behind me, please leave a comment down below, and I will try to danger up in time to avoid this from being a tragic documentary. This is my first three-gun rifle I ever bought or had built. Um, if you've seen me shoot this rifle live and in person, we're probably good friends because it was a long time ago. 